unless you're new here, you probably know that I'm obsessed with languages and French has been my longest love affair. So a while ago, I started listening to a lot of French music and amidst compiling this nine hour playlist, I started noticing that there's something about French music that just hits different. The percentage of songs that I tend to like from an artist's album is just much higher, and the musicality, the lyrics, just everything is so good. So I decided to dig a little bit deeper and started noticing some patterns. So today I wanted to share with you the linguistic reasons that I think make French music objectively good. The artists I primarily listen to are the king himself, Stromae, Angèle, L.E.J., Suzanne, and Therapitaxi. As a disclaimer, this is a video about songs in the French language because Stromae and Angèle are both Belgian. I think the other ones are French. Also, I'm not French. This is just on my opinion, my observations. It's just for fun. And it's not to put any other music or language down. It's more to just kind of nerdily dig into why French songs are so good. So something that stood out to me consistently the more I listened to these artists, especially Stromae, Angèle, and Suzanne, is that they discuss a very wide range of topics in their albums. They talk about societal issues, women's issues, and go beyond just love and heartbreak, but they also do so in a way that's tasteful, relatable, and really emotional. Each song really takes you through a story, and this is reflected in the music videos as well, which are all amazing. I think regardless of whether you understand French or not, you can really connect with their music, which I think is really powerful and also intentional. Here are a few albums and the corresponding song topics. As you can see, they really thrive on social commentary, but also the simplicities of human experiences. So now moving on to the linguistic reasons, the first one is words with double meanings. A lot of words sound the same in French, but mean completely different things. I'm sure you've seen the little TikTok memes. Green grass towards worm verse. Ver, 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 ver. Ver, 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 ver. This is a really cool poetic technique because you then use grammar to distinguish between the meanings of words because the sounds are not going to cut it. So this is really obvious in LEJ's song Tu es. Tu es means you are, but then tu es means to kill, and then tu es is the past participle, so it means killed. So the chorus line of this song is Tu es, tu es, tu es, tu es bon, tu es mauvais, mais t'as tu es, tu es, tu es. À trop vouloir te sauver. I don't know, I think it's just so cool that you can say the same sounding word but it means completely different things and as a French speaker you know just because of the grammar. Next is variation in pronunciation. So in French you can actually manipulate words to add or remove syllables and this is not just something that's understandable but often like is considered a reasonable way to speak and I'll explain what I mean. Words that end with C-E or R-E, you can choose to pronounce that syllable or not. For example, dire can be dire or dire, sourire, si, sourire, um, parce que, parce que. So you know how in like some English songs, artists will smush a bunch of words together to make it fit into the rhythm and you're like, that was kind of a stretch and was kind of weird, but you're famous, so it's fine. I feel like things like that fly a lot more naturally in French, and the same goes for deleting sounds. Contractions are very common in French. For example, je suis turns into je suis, tu as, es ta, tu es ta. It's not really like in English though, where it sounds kind of awkward to say things like, uh, we cannot go there. People usually just say can't. We do not do that people usually say we don't do that. I feel like in French, you can use either or. Here's an example from a song. Je suis pas tout seul à être tout seul. Ça fait déjà ça de moins dans la tête. Et si je comptais, combien on est? So, like I said before, this je suis has turned into je suis. And then être is a pretty common way of shortening être. You, a lot of people just say être. Uh, this ja, I wouldn't say this is a common way of speaking, but this is déjà, or already, or before. And then here, de moi is de moi. Uh, similar to this, je suis, je comptais, instead of je comptais. What this does is, I think it allows artists more freedom when they write their lyrics. Again, I'm speculating, but let's say you have a really fire line. There are ways to manipulate the sounds in your existing lyric so that you can make it fit into the rhythm of the song that you have. So I feel like this might be one reason that French lyrics are really, really good because the artists can kind of create lyrics without modifying them too much because there are ways within the language to manipulate how many syllables they take up so that they can fit in your song. So 
you don't necessarily have to change what's on paper too much. Okay, now the nerd level is increasing with vowel consistency. So American English is notorious for having diphthongs, which means that even within a vowel sound, you're going from one vowel to another. So even just the letter I, it's I. It's not just like one sound. So here's an example from Heat Waves by Glass Animals. We all know the chorus, sometimes all I think about is you, late nights in the middle of June. Heat waves been faking me out, can't make you happier now. So if we said this without diphthongs, it would be sometimes all I think about is you, <laughs> late night, I can't, I can't do it. Um, it's really weird, and that's not to say like English shouldn't have diphthongs, that's just the way the language is. In comparison, French really doesn't have any diphthongs, so each vowel that you see in a word only represents one sound. Uh, one way you can check this is like dividing up a word into syllables and then seeing if that syllable has the entire vowel sound in it. Here's an example. Le spleen n'est plus à la mode, c'est pas compliqué d'être heureux. If you divide this into syllables, it's le spleen n'est plus à la mode. Every syllable that I said has a complete vowel sound in it. Whereas in English, you can't really do that. Like heat, way, it's not waves, it's waves. Been fe, it's not faking, it's faking. It's really funny because sometimes French artists will throw in English words into their songs and they really stick out like a sore thumb. Um, Tout le monde, ils veulent seulement la fame. <laughs> so like I said before, it's not like diphthongs are bad. So why does this matter? Brings us to the next point, which is rhyming without even trying. And also like going along with this, vowels that are really parallel. Since there are no diphthongs, it's a lot easier to match up vowels and have them line up within a lyric. It feels like French rhymes without even trying. Also, I know a lot of French learners and like people with opinions will say, French is so dumb, like you don't even pronounce half the letters at the end of the word. Yeah, it's poetic genius because the emphasis is on the vowel, so it doesn't really matter what the end of the word is, people will be tricked into thinking that the words rhyme. I feel like English relies more heavily on consonants to make rhymes, and consonants and vowels kind of have an equal burden in creating the rhyme. Um, if you're missing the vowel, it's a big deal, but if you're missing the consonant, it's also a big deal, it won't really sound like a rhyme. Whereas in French, the emphasis is mostly on the vowel. Here's an example stanza. It's a little long, but I will explain everything. Je veux la voir, la regarde de en face. Elle m'aimera plus longtemps que la vie. En mélange de silence et de grâce, j'irai même si on me l'interdit. Je la trouve belle, on me dit qu'elle est sombre. Si elle passe pas loin, je la devine. La désirée, c'est porter une bombe. Je n'ai pas peur de me tromper de fil. So now not only does this fuss and crass, v interdit, it's just a A, B pattern, right? There's also like vowels that line up within each of these lyrics. So this first line is the A sound. We have la, voir, la, regarde en face, the A, A, A sound. Then this one's my favorite, un mélange de silence et de crasse. Mélange and silence, like you can see that these letters are completely different. We have A, N, G, E, E, N, C, E but the on sound makes it kind of a line. Again, you see in this line um, with the a sound, la désirée c'est porté, uh, a, a, a. Again, this is not something that's intentional. I don't think artists are walking around trying to make sure each of the vowel sounds in their lyrics match up. Maybe they do, maybe they do a little bit, but it's just a quality of the language. So it makes stanzas and lines sound a lot more clean. It sounds less chaotic. Things are just more, you know, musical and poetic. Another reason for the rhymes is that French conjugations have all the same endings. Um, like all IR verbs have the same endings, all ER verbs have the same endings. It's a lot easier to make the ends of your words align if the endings are the same. Uh, from the same song, I think this is a fun line. A qui la faute, je me suis lassé le cé bleu cé par des mots. On the same vein, because we don't really pronounce the last letters, there's so many words that end with the A sound, so again, makes it very, very easy to rhyme. I think a lot of songs in English, like, it used to be kind of necessary for songs to rhyme all the time, and now artists take a lot more liberty with rhyming or not because it's like freeing to not have to do that, but it's almost seamless in French, which is something I love. Okay, and the last point I want to talk about is consonant chaos and fricative fun. So fricatives are when you make a sound by obstructing the air, so like f, s, z, um, those are all fricatives. 
and then you know what consonants are. It seems to me that artists try to have some fun with consonants and create alliterations within their lines. I have two examples, one of them is less obvious than the other, but I'm gonna try to try to show you. This first line, I don't even know if I can do it justice, but I'm gonna try and if I don't get copyright striked, I will try to put in the little clip so that you can hear. I see a lot of repetition of the T and the TR sound, uh, so try to listen carefully for that. This line is said so fast, I cannot say that fast. Trois petites meufs en pleine tempête sans maîtrise, un triptyque que neuf se complète comme un tetris. LAJ is so good, please go listen to them. Another example is from the song Itzal by Terra Pitaxi. It's in the second line. So, tu continues à danser sur des Itzal. Si t'étais tout à moi, tu serais mon castal. Uh, the tete tout à moi, the tease in tete tout à moi is like so fun. And it's a chorus line, so it repeats a lot throughout the song. I don't think this is intentional, like that's just how you say if you're all mine. It's just a feature of the language that's really fun and adds just some pizzazz to lyrics. So truly, I just wanted to make this video because I love French songs, I love French language, so just needed to shout it from the rooftop so that everyone knows. I think it also opened my eyes to the fact that you're not necessarily going to find even remotely similar things across the pop music of different cultures or across the music of different cultures. And I know that sounds really basic, but hear me out. When you step back and think about the fact that songs are invariably going to reflect a culture's values, beliefs, practices, without the artist intentionally trying to put them in there, then you'll start noticing that there's a lot of nuanced things that are just fundamentally different across the music of different countries. For example, India really values classical arts, you know, classical music, dance. So one of the hallmark aspects of a lot of Indian songs, like pop, like Bollywood songs, is that they will still have very strong classically trained vocals and that's kind of what carries the song. And that's not necessarily true across cultures. The second thing is that, like we saw in French, there are some things that can show up in one language that fundamentally can't show up in another. Like we talked about the vowel consistency and the rhyming without trying. There are other linguistic qualities that show up in other languages. So there are musical and linguistic possibilities in songs that you probably can't even imagine or know exist. So my challenge for you for today or this week is to listen to music from other cultures. My personal favorites besides French music is Brazilian Portuguese music. Um, and try to, as a bonus, pick up on some of these linguistic qualities if you speak the language. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe share it with someone who you would think would like it. Leave a comment below and let me know what type of foreign language music is your favorite. And if you're new here and enjoy things about language and culture, please subscribe. We would love to have you. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Bye.